Hi, I'm Philippe Verne. I'm the director of MOCA in Los Angeles. I couldn't be more happy to start my tenure at MOCA with the Mike Kelly retrospective. The exhibition started in Amsterdam under the leadership of Anne Goldstein, and Anne was um, a curator here at LA MOCA and very close to, uh, to Mike. The show uh, then went to the Pompidou Center uh, Musée d'Art Moderne in, in Paris and before coming to us, before this uh, fantastic homecoming in Los Angeles, went to MoMA PS1 um, a few months ago. So the exhibition here will be held at the Geffen Contemporary in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, it is installed by MOCA curator Bennett Simpson, who I have to say did a fantastic job. I was privileged enough to see the exhibition as a, at the Stedelijk in Amsterdam, in Paris, and at MoMA PS1 in New York. Here it's very special, I have to say. It's more, for me, it's closest to what Mike would have liked and what Mike would have done with the exhibition. And it's a great tribute to both Anne and Bennett to be able to actually channel what Mike's vision would have been here. I think people need to understand that the LA art scene wouldn't be what it is without the presence of Mike Kelly as an artist and as a teacher. His relationship with MOCA here is made very clear when you look at our collection. I think we have the deepest, strongest collection of Mike Kelly in, in the museum, not only in this country, but I would say internationally. For me as a person and as an audience member, I really discovered or learned about Mike Eddy's work through an exhibition that I've never seen but only read about and read the book, which was Elter Skelter, uh, an exhibition curated by Paul Schimmel, who uh, featured you know, major, major work by Mike Kelly, who also did performances with, uh, with MOCA uh, and outside of MOCA, but had a very strong presence in Los Angeles. As you will go through the exhibition, you will see works belonging to our collection across the career, actually, from Silver Bowl, so it was a gift of collector and board member Blake Byrne, to very early drawings, to Monkey Island, to, for me, one of the absolute masterpiece, which is a Pay for Your Pleasure. It's an architectural uh, installation made out of portrait of some of the most important poet and writer and philosopher. Uh, and they all have a quote about their relationship, their understanding, at time, their support of criminals. So this installation itself uh, is a statement not only about criminality, not only about morality, uh, but about convention. What do we consider uh, criminality today? What are the moral codes of, uh, of today? At the end, as you leave this installation, you have a painting which was not made by Mike Kelly. But Mike Kelly requested that a painting made by a convicted inmate uh, from the city where the piece is shown would be had as the final touch in this installation. At the beginning of the installation, you have a little box for donation. Uh, so the audience are invited to pay for their voyeuristic pleasure and all the proceeds that the, the institution will collect will go to a local charity which mission is to work with the victims of, uh, of violence. Even if you have seen the exhibition in a different location, there are really good reasons to come back and see it again at MOCA. The curators, Bennett Simpson and Anne Goldstein, have added pieces, installations that were not on view in the other venues, such as Framed and Frame, which is a gigantic, uh, monumental installation based on the Chinatown wishing well here in downtown Los Angeles. On the top of that, Mobile Home State will be coming from Detroit. Mobile Home State was one of the, the latest projects by Mike Kelly that he did in Detroit, rebuilding as a mobile home, his childhood home, that in Detroit is dedicated to community gathering and community organizations. It will come here, it will be on a truck, uh, it will make its way to Los Angeles, and then here as well, it will be programmed, it will be the location for community gathering. 
So when you look at this exhibition, not only you have an artist who has changed the way we think of art, who brought to art music, performances, popular culture, who has made major aesthetic shift in our understanding of art, but has done that also with an understanding of what it means to be an artist in the public realm and be a, a civic artist.